All right, we're going to be speaking about loops. Now, a loop is very, very easy uh, to do, and there's many reasons why you'd want to do it. Um, let's say your pre-show music isn't tracks or songs, but in fact, um, a sound effect or a feeling. Uh, when we did a show called Elements on Norwegian Cruise Lines, their uh, pre-show music, uh, there was no tracks, no beats, no melodies. It was the sound of wind and some thunder and some rain, and it was the feeling of this bizarre world that you were entering. Kind of if you go to see a Cirque du Soleil show, very similar. So in that case, you would have a you know 15-minute um, version of this song, and you have it loop for hours. <laughs> so to do a loop, it's very, very simple. You're going to grab a song, okay, and uh, we're going to get, uh, make sure the whole song is playing right now. But to give you an example, to shorten the loop, you're going to grow, like I showed you before, we're going to grab the end of that, and we're going to change the end time to just about there, okay? Now that's a 18 second loop. We're going to go over here, we're going to fast forward the song using load to time, which I'll speak to you a little bit later about. We're going to forward that. Uh, to about 14 seconds in and when we hit play uh, we're gonna change this and click on the normal play would be would show like this would say one okay it say play one count so you play a track it plays one time and stops automatically we're gonna change that to what's called infinite loop that's where the track is gonna keep looping over and over and over again so if we go over here and we hit go it starts over again, okay? Now obviously it didn't sound very good because this song is not really designed to do that, but you can then go into your time and loops and make it sound correct. Check this out. We're gonna go into uh, time and loops now, and uh, I actually use this in one of my shows. I do a mind reading routine where as I'm setting up the story of the mind reading bit, I don't want the um, I want the music to be very suspenseful before the song comes in. So the song has a great intro, very similar to this, um, but I want that intro to keep playing because I don't have to rush my dialogue to finish before the, before the track finishes, which is how it used to be. I want to be able to talk to the audience and build up the routine and change it depending on who my, who my audience is. So what I do is I come in here and I grab just that section. I think it's about 13, this is not the song I used, but I just tried this a minute ago. I think it's about 13 seconds, something like that. Yeah, it's 13.4 seconds. So the way I do that is by zooming in and looking at the waveforms. And if you do any audio editing, this will be very simple to you. Uh, if you use Audacity or Logic, you're going to zoom in and you can see how right there, that kind of ends at the end of that note, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out and uh, we're going to start this one more time. And we're going to play this little intro. Now it's going to come to the end. Okay, that sounded pretty good, but did you hear that kind of like little like little click? Um, it didn't sound like a smooth edit, and that's because the beginning of the track, if we go all the way to the very beginning, you'll notice it also has a half a second or a, <laughs> a was it a tenth of a second of dead space. And that's all it takes for that not to sound right. So we're going to drag the start of that right to the beginning of that waveform, just like so. It'll also start 10 <laughs> tenths of a second faster when we start the track. So we're going to start it over. Hit go. When it comes to the end of the track, it'll loop and it'll sound perfect this time. I mean, you can't even hear that it wasn't designed to be that way. Now this will do this continuously until I stop it, okay? But let's find some really cool ways of having more control over that. So let's say you you just want to do a quick edit in, Q, in, uh, in QLab without having to uh, use Soundtrack Pro, or oh gosh, I'm showing my age. Soundtrack Pro doesn't exist anymore without using Logic or Audacity or something like that. So you can then go here and copy this track. 
repaste it. I just did the old copy and paste. That's the same keys on any computer. Um, now this time I ended this here at uh, 13 uh, seconds and some change. We're just going to copy that at the end time. Command copy. And uh, we're going to move this all the way to the end. The, we're going to move the end time. If I can grab it. There you go. To the very end. And we're going to change the start time to that exact moment. Okay. So we just moved. You see how our start time just moved? Okay. We're going to, this first track here has a end time of 13 and change seconds. And this one has a start time of 13 seconds. So we're going to then make a group. If you remember correctly, the uh, shortcut for group was command zero. And we are going to make the second part of this roings. <laughs> and then we're also going to do a uh, fade out by dragging this, which we learned before. And we're going to fade that out and stop track. Okay. So check this out. We did this already, but I want to show you why we're doing it again because it's going to get even better this time. We're going to start that loop. Make sure this timeline is on all children simultaneously. It starts again. Okay. And now. Okay, so by firing it manually, it didn't sound good because it didn't join into that song. Uh, unlike the, the Beatles version we did earlier where it came in at a higher volume and it was okay to make that, it was a huge different change. This is supposed to flow beautifully and it won't do that. So check this out. Um, you could have it designed um, to where you want the beginning of that to play three loops and then auto follow into that. So all we're gonna do now is drag this out of there Okay, and instead of worried about fading and stopping this, we're going to tell it to end automatically by going into the play count and turning off infinite loop, but telling it to play two times. Okay, and then this time it's going to start after the two times, you're going to go over here and you're going to auto follow it to the bottom one, which is the second part of that, which is starting at thir 13 seconds. So we follow this now. It's going to play it one time. After it gets to the end, it's going to play it a second time. At the end of the second time, it's going to auto loop to the end. And watch how smooth this is going to sound. Okay? That was your first loop. Now stand by for the second part, which is going to stop the first track and start the second part from another part of the song. Sounds perfect okay now the only problem with this is you are back to the original problem I had before your dialogue then has to be based off of the track that's playing behind you okay uh, you know now you're always gonna have uh, two loops before it plays the actual song but what if I could tell you you could do anywhere between a five second um, uh, loop to a two hour loop and at any point in time, get that exact same effect to happen. It's called devamp. Let's find out right now in the next video.